On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, I want to thank you for taking a few minutes from your day to learn about this project. I'll be walking you through a short presentation regarding the proposed changes on Fifth Avenue, or US 192, from Riverside Place to Miramar Avenue, or State Road A1A in Brevard County. This project includes roadway resurfacing and other roadway improvements. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Should you wish to express any concerns regarding FDOT compliance with Title VI, please contact either Jennifer Smith, the District 5 Title VI Coordinator, or Jacqueline Paramore, the State Title VI Coordinator, using the contact information found in this presentation. As mentioned, the project is located on Fifth Avenue, or US 192, from Riverside Place to Miramar Avenue, or State Road A1A, in Indy Atlantic, Brevard County. The purpose of the project is to resurface the roadway and make additional safety improvements along the corridor. Safety improvements include upgraded pedestrian lighting, reconstructed curb ramps and driveways to meet current American with Disabilities Act or ADA standards, and improved drainage on the project corridor. A typical repaving project has three major goals. The first goal is to extend the life of the pavement. The second goal is enhancing corridor safety. And the third is addressing ADA improvements. As part of enhancing corridor safety, the existing mid-block pedestrian crossings will be improved with the inclusion of Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacons, or RRFB. These crossings are located east of Riverside Drive, east of Ramona Avenue, in front of Indy Atlantic City Hall, as seen here, and east of Shannon Avenue. Let's take a step back from the project to quickly learn a bit more about these RRFBs. A Rectangular Rapid Flashing Beacon, or RRFB, consists of two rapid flashing yellow lights that are mounted below a yellow pedestrian crossing sign. The flashing lights remain dark until they are activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. While motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, RRFBs are installed to bring more visibility to the marked crosswalk to help pedestrians who need to cross. Let's take a look at how a pedestrian will interact with the RRFB. Upon approaching the crosswalk, the beacon will be dark and cars will be proceeding normally. Pedestrians are encouraged to push the button to activate the beacon, thus making their intent to cross more noticeable to motorists. Upon pressing the button to activate the signal, pedestrians may enter the crosswalk when motorists have come to a complete stop, or if no traffic is present closer than a safe stopping distance. Pedestrians will notice the flashing yellow lights or supplemental lights on the side of the RRFB to let them know the device has been activated. The flashing lights on the beacon will continue for a short time, allowing pedestrians to cross. Finally, after pedestrians have completed crossing and the RRFB has stopped flashing, any approaching pedestrians will have to press the button again to activate the RRFB, repeating the cycle. Now, let's look at how a motorist will interact with the RRFB. The RRFB's default state is dark until a pedestrian presses a button to cross. Motorists may proceed with caution if no pedestrians are in the crosswalk. Once a pedestrian presses the button, indicating they're ready to cross, the yellow lights begin to flash rapidly. The motorist must stop or clear the crossing if they are too close to stop safely. Motorists must remain stopped while pedestrians cross. The beacon will continue to flash and motorists may proceed once the pedestrians clear their lane. Finally, the beacons will return to dark and motorists may proceed with traffic when there are no pedestrians in the crosswalk. The beacons will remain dark until a new pedestrian approaches the crossing and presses the button. As a reminder, RRFBs are installed to bring more visibility to the marked crosswalk to help pedestrians who need to cross. Motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, regardless if the crosswalk has an RRFB. Now let's continue to examine the improvements taking place across the entire corridor. Through these next few slides, I'll slow down a bit to give you the time to review the plans. Detailed plans are also available on the project website. Starting at the west side of the corridor, just west of Riverside Place, 
the roadway will be resurfaced. Pedestrian curb ramps will be constructed to meet current Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA standards, including detectable warning pads with surface indicators. Moving east down Fifth Avenue, between Riverside Drive and Palm Avenue, the resurfacing will continue. Pedestrian curb ramp reconstruction will also continue further down the corridor. Two of the rectangular rapid flashing beacons mentioned earlier will be installed at the mid-block crosswalks on this segment. Now, at the segment between Palm Avenue and Shannon Avenue, the resurfacing and pedestrian curb ramp reconstruction will continue. The third rectangular rapid flashing beacon will be installed in front of City Hall. Finally, the resurfacing of pedestrian curb ramp reconstruction will wrap up between Shannon Avenue through just east of Miramar Avenue. The fourth rectangular rapid flashing beacon will be installed on this segment. Design of this project is anticipated to be complete in spring 2021. Construction is anticipated to begin early 2022 at an estimated cost of 2.5 million. The improvements will be constructed entirely within the existing right of way and therefore will not require property acquisition. The department welcomes your questions and comments, and there are several ways that you can get involved and provide feedback on this project. You can provide a comment using the question box on the project's webpage, or you may contact the FDOT project manager directly. The project's webpage can be found at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 442883-1. The comment button is located in the right column when viewing on desktop or about halfway down the screen when viewing on a mobile device. Please contact us with any questions or comments. The project manager, Elia Joseph, PE, can be reached by mail addressed to Florida Department of Transportation, attention Eliod Joseph, that's E-L-I-O-D-E-J-O-S-E-P-H, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, DeLand, Florida, 32720. He may also be reached by email at eliode.joseph at dot.state.fl.us or by phone at 386-943-5388. Thank you for taking a few minutes from your day to learn about this project.